The Accident Mortgage and Realty Show is sponsored by Accident Mortgage, an equal housing lender, NMLS ID 255368, and Accident Realty Advisors, which is a separate company from but still affiliated with Accident Mortgage. Putting a roof over your head without the headache. Get answers to all of your home buying questions. This is the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickers on 620 WTMJ. And a good Sunday morning to you, Memorial Day weekend. I'm Steve Kettlar along with AccuNet Realty Advisors President and AccuNet Mortgages. Brian Wickert and licensed millennial loan consultant David Wickert on this Sunday ahead of Memorial Day. As always, if you have a question, you can call us at 414-799-1620 or throughout the Midwest on the Acunet Mortgage toll-free talk line. That number is 1-800-877-1620. So tomorrow's Memorial Day, gentlemen. Yep, Memorial Day. I was just uh, talking with David about my fond memories of Memorial Day. In fact, I think I'm going to Google if they still have this parade, but my paternal grandparents, Frank V. Wickard and Clara Wickard, were kind of big wheels in the VFW. Uh, and so down in Bayview, which at the time was called the Town of Lake, mm-hmm. they put on a great Memorial Day parade. And so Grandpa would be in the in the you know convertible because he was a grand marshal sometimes. And I got to ride in the convertible, and then they would end up at Woodlawn Cemetery. And as a young lad, I don't know, I'm going to say I was six years old. I got to do Oh, that. wow. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance, man. I got, I had to memorize the Pledge of Allegiance. Good job by you. Do people still say the Pledge of Allegiance at, in school? I think there's a, a number of schools that still do that. Okay. okay. Don't test for, me. For right elementary, now, I, I want to say. For sure. Anyway, the fond memories, I'm going to try to go to a parade tomorrow. I know they got one right here in the uh, town of Merton where we live, so... I'm going to take in a break tomorrow. So Good job. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we're going to talk today about property taxes and how that has... An Nothing impact. says Memorial Day quite like property taxes. Right. <laughs> but go on. we got to pay for yes. Our yes. military. For everything. That's yes. not True. how we do it. Actually. For sure. Right. Property taxes do not go towards the military, okay. just in case you're wondering. That's from your income taxes. Anyway... Uh, you know, we get asked every day, how much home can I afford? And one of the big elements in that is uh, your property taxes. Sure. Uh, and there was a, 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 a study, I'm going to call it, published by a company called CoreLogic. Dave, uh, why does CoreLogic know all about property taxes? Aren't they owned by a large mortgage-related company? Well, they are a large mortgage-related company. And what their job is, is that they report to mortgage loan servicers what the annual property taxes are on all the loans in that mortgage servicer's portfolio, and they do that once a year. Got it. So in order to do that, they have to collect all the information from every municipality in America. And so they came out with uh, uh, a a little chart here that I'm looking at for the states ranked by median property tax rate as a percentage of the property value. Okay, here's your quiz, uh, guys. Uh, of these states, which one do you think has the highest property tax rate? Do you think it's New Jersey, New York, or Illinois? Dave? I'm going to pick on Illinois. Steve? Oh, Illinois without a doubt. Illinois without a doubt. And you're correct. The average for the whole state now is uh, 2.67% of, um, of the property value. So that would be about 5300 bucks. On a two hundred thousand dollar property, Oof, yeah. and then uh, New York is not far behind him at two point five three. New Hampshire two point four, New Jersey two point three seven. I was surprised to see Texas in here at two point one seven. But can anybody think of why no that was? No state be? income tax. That's right. No state. This kid's pretty smart. Okay. Uh, Connecticut and Pennsylvania are all round out the uh, three. The worst. Six, seven in the above two percent club. All right, where do, any guesses on where do you think Wisconsin comes in? I would say uh, we're in the top 15. Yeah. Really? Yep, 1.95. So we just barely escaped. 1.95%. Now, you start to think about that, and that's what I want to drill down on here in a second, is that's the state average. And I can tell you the tax rate is a lot different in low overhead town of Merton, where I live. Sure than it is, let's say, in West Dallas or West Milwaukee. Those are traditional. Well, and not. Uh, I can't believe I'm defending Illinois, but I'm sure Chicago pulls their average up more than. I don't know. That's a uh, you down, would think down that south. Cook County and Chicago would yeah. probably be higher. And same for you know New York and I, I'm just making that. 
No, but they have higher expenses. Sure. Big cities, you know, uh, bigger services, more people. Yep. Typically, you'd have that. So in our club there, it's Vermont, Nebraska, and Wisconsin are all like 1.95, 1.96, 1.98. Our neighbors in Minnesota are not far behind us, so they're a little farther down. Oh, way farther down, 1.27 okay. of uh, property value. Florida is only 1.32, so that kind of blows our theory on state income tax. Oh, in the states. Okay. All right, uh, which of the following do you think is the lowest property taxes in these United States? Would you go with Alabama, South Dakota, or Hawaii? South Steve, Dakota. you go. You're going to go where? South Dakota? South Dakota. Uh, I'll go uh, Alabama. All right, and the answer is Hawaii. What? I don't know why that is, but it's uh, at 0.31%. South wow. Dakota, 038 and Alabama at a half percent. Hmm. So quite a bit of variety there. When we come back from this first break, let's break that down now into that question of how does that property tax impact how much else you can buy? You got it. Very key. And if you have a question, you can reach us at 414-799-1620 or throughout the Midwest on the Acunet Mortgage toll-free talk line. That number is 1-800-877-1620. Don't break the bank to get into a house. Back to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. The Oklahoma City Thunder's style of play, something the Bucks can replicate with similar success. Justin Garcia examines the future of the young Bucks at 12.07 today during Wisconsin's Sports Weekend here on 620 WTMJ. We're in the midst of the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show here on 620 WTMJ. With us, Brian Wickard and also David Wickard. And the topic at hand when it comes to property taxes factoring into how much house can you afford to buy when you're looking at the overall expense picture, right? Yeah, and that's something, of course, we do all the time, and we love doing it. Uh, We've got the rock-solid, fully verified, and guaranteed pre-approval program, which has really been a big success this year, because not only are we verifying people's credit, uh, we're also verifying their income and their down payment. Those are the three components that you know need to be checked out. And then we're issuing the pre-approval letter, and we're not only saying you're good to go, we're saying if we're wrong, we'll pay the seller a thousand bucks cash if we cannot make good on the pre-approval letter that we issue. We'll also pay the buyer a thousand bucks cash if we're wrong. So we're trying to get the point across that. We're so thorough, we stand behind our work. And and we haven't yet had to pay out because we're we haven't that been, thorough. Right, right. And we've done a lot of these. Yes. I, I should total up the number, but it's it's really a good program and essential in this tight market. All right, so what are we doing when we say how much home can you afford? What we're really doing, Steve, is we're calculating what's the maximum monthly house payment you can afford, including taxes, right. homeowners insurance, property taxes which we're going to back into here in a second, any monthly mortgage insurance that might be required, and if you're buying a condo, homeowners association yeah. dues. Those are the pillars. But before we kind of get to that number, the first thing we have to calculate is what's your maximum, I call it, grand total of all monthly payments. So not just your house payment, but also car, car loans and leases, student loans, child support. That's a big one for mm-hmm. people who are divorced. Your minimum uh, credit card debt, and we talked about credit cards on last week's show. Yep. And, uh, and of course, then you, and your new monthly mortgage payment all combined. I call it your financial blood pressure. How much <laughs> can you stand to pay? Now, notice that cable TV, Netflix, and cell phone, uh, bill. cell phone bills are not included in that. No. And I, was, no. I was thinking about why. Why do you think that is? Any guesses? Because uh, it doesn't get reported to a bureau? Well, that could be one thing. I thought that two reasons I came up with were one, they weren't around when the mortgage industry invented these rules. Okay. And the other is they're kind of discretionary. Okay. You theoretically, I mean, could you? Could anybody really live without their sm- their cell phone? Uh, no. Y- yes. I mean, you could, but okay. it, it's it's tough. Anyway, um, so, by the way, also utilities are not included, which yes. is interesting because those have been around. So let's say you're a person or a couple that earns seventy two thousand dollars in annual income before taxes, so that's $6,000 a month. It's before anything comes out of your paycheck. That's the number that mortgage lenders use. Now, we could max out your total monthly payments at up to 50% of your income Mm -hmm. if we went, like, with an FHA loan. I mean, that is the absolute max. Pre-tax. 
free tax. We're yeah. talking about, yeah, we can load you down with $3,000 a month of payments yes. all in. Not recommended. No. Uh, so let's make that a little bit more reasonable and use kind of a more in-the-box number of 38%. That means if you're making $72,000 a year, you can have total monthly payments of $2,300 a month. All right, that's step one. Step two is now we back out those things that are not your house payment. Sure. Let's say you have two car loans at $250 apiece, $100 a month in credit card uh, payments, and yep. 100 bucks in student loans. Yep. That's 700 Yes. 2300 minus 700 leaves you with a maximum housing payment of $1,600 a month. Yes. Now what we get to do, now that we know that number, so that's the big number we're aiming for. Yes. You, you can fit have it all in that $1,600. Yeah. That's your shoebox. Yep. Principal and interest goes into that, taxes, insurance, et cetera. And so what are the impacts that? Well, the amount of your down payment, property taxes, right? And then the term of the loan, how far are you going to stretch it out? and whether or not you're going to pay monthly mortgage insurance. When we come back, I've got these startling numbers of just how much property taxes plays a role in that using our maximum $1,600 a month house payment. When we come back. Right here on the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. Important home buying questions and answers you can count on. This is the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. Well, a recent study shows more young adults are choosing to live with their parents rather than roommates or their significant other. What's behind that trend? Michelle Litchens dives in on this subject coming up at 1135 this morning here on WTMJ. Right now, we're visiting with Brian Wickert and David Wickert. It's the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. So we just uh, covered uh, how a person, we can back into a maximum monthly home payment, and in our example, it was $1,600 a month. So here's a real-life example. A person that uh, wants to put 10% down if they had uh, uh, good credit, 740 they could buy a $255,000 home, two fifty five, so a little more than a quarter million dollars, and they would have a monthly payment of $1,583 using a 30-year fixed rate loan at 3.99% with no monthly PMI. Bam, bam, because that's how we get our lowest monthly payment when we do the math. And that has an annual percentage rate, by the way, of 4.001. Uh, taxes would be $425 to that equation. <clears throat> and then with the estimated homeowner's insurance of 64 bucks a month, we come in under our budget of $1,600. All right, so that's at an effective annual tax rate of 2%, which is right close yep. to the Wisconsin average of 1.95 that we covered earlier. Now, let's say you end up going to a higher tax municipality. Oh, I don't know, one that where the property taxes are 3%. So we're we're talking about, you know, maybe more Milwaukee County. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the higher tax municipalities within Milwaukee County tend to be uh, West Milwaukee, West Dallas, and Milwaukee itself. Now your purchasing power drops. You're taking money away from the mortgage portion because yes. it has to go into the tax portion. That's right. So now we're talking about you can only buy a 225 a $30,000 reduction in home purchasing power. All over 1600 bucks in property taxes per year. That's correct, because now we're devoting uh, $140 more, roughly, towards the property taxes. Sure. That leaves less for the principal and interest portion. Yes. Excellent. Well played, David. Well pointed out. That's I exactly where yes, okay. balancing that. And we're still at the same payment of 1584 Now, if you came out here to western Waukesha County, low overhead town of Merton, yes. where we have a volunteer fire department, by the way, and they're looking for volunteers, according to the signage that I see on the road, uh, you could buy a $275,000 home because our property taxes out here only average 1.5% okay. of the value of the home. So you're looking at a spread of 50 grand. Yeah, that's a lot of house. That's a lot of house, and twenty grand compared to kind of the average run of the mill. Yeah. So there's how much property taxes matter. The answer is it matters quite a bit. Heaven forbid, of. you know, we go down the path of talking about condominiums. I mean, just because I've had experience. Oh, I'm buying a condominium, you know, downtown in the third ward. Toss in three hundred dollars a month in condo dues. Right. That eats. You know, if you can only fit. Everything into $1,600 per year example, well, 
if 300 of that's going to the condo association, that means we have to fit everything into 1,300 bucks. Right. And then let's say that you're paying more like 2.5% or 3%. Property, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're devoting a lot of things to other than your mortgage. Yes. Principal and interest part. This, you know what's funny about the condo dues, though, is this. The condo association dues are turning into a monthly expense the big, chunky maintenance items for your condo building. Yeah. And so that doesn't happen on a person's single-family home. They hope you're setting that money aside Which you're not. Right. Right. And so it's kind of an unfair, um, you know, disadvantage. Accountability. To condo people, to condo buyers, because we are expressing in terms of a monthly expense that expense to keep up the building. And you know, you just put a roof on your house, David, it's all of a sudden you got to come up with six grand. Yes. Or eight grand or whatever the cost is. And it wasn't built into my monthly payment to... Yeah, Yeah, you did not exactly have a budget where you were demonstrating you were setting aside... The roof fund over here, yes. Whereas in a condo association, that actually is happening. Yeah. So um, that's that's a really good point. A point well taken. All right, when we come back, uh, we're coming up here on the news shortly. This is going to be a really, really big week, uh, the week here following the Memorial Day holiday for economic news, because it's the last significant measurements of two things that the Federal Reserve holds nearest and dearest to their heart when it comes to gauging the health of the economy and whether or not they're going to raise rates on June 15th. So we're going to talk about what those reports are and what that could mean to interest rates when we come back. You're listening to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show here on 620 WTMJ. It's now 1030 on this uh, Sunday morning as we head over to the WTMJ 24-hour newsroom and an update with Colleen Bolin. Thank you, Steve. A section of one of the busiest highways along. Find a place to call home without the headache. This is the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. And with us, Brian Wickard and also David Wickard. It's a big week here in front of us when it comes to various economic reports from the Fed because June 15th they could decide to maybe tick interest rates back up again. Yep. Yeah, they already raised uh, the overnight rate uh, by a quarter percent in December. And uh, and now uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the, the futures market. So this is kind of a gambling parlor. Um, where you can legal measure, gambling, uh, yeah, 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 perfectly legal. Uh, that measures the chances of Fed rate hike. It was four percent like a month ago. Yeah, there's a four percent chance they're going to raise at uh, the June fifteenth meeting. Now I believe that's at sixty one percent, so greater than a majority chance. And uh, just to, just to remind everybody, the Federal Reserve's official job, according to their congressional mandate, is to do two things. Dave, uh, control inflation. It's called price stability. Okay. And uh, full employment. Full employment. That's right. Which is, I believe, uh, under the old rule of thumb was 5% unemployment. Which is exactly where the unemployment rate was last month. But that requires people participating in the employment yeah, market, yeah. but we can have that conversation uh, all right. later. So, so guess what we have on Tuesday is we have the measurement of inflation that the Federal Reserve likes to see. It's called the personal consumption expenditures index or the PCE index. That's different than the one that you hear most widely talked about, the consumer price index. It's better. Okay. For some reason that I don't really know. Okay. But that comes out at 8.30 in the morning on Tuesday. And so for some reason, the Federal Reserve, price stability to them doesn't mean zero inflation, which is what it would mean to me and the average person. I like zero inflation. Yeah. But the Federal Reserve wants to see that at 2%. And the last number that we had had it at 1.7. So if the inflation number on Tuesday comes in closer to 2, like, you know, somewhere between 1.7 and 2. And by the way, they're looking for the core, so they're knocking out the cost of energy and food. They want to see that come in closer to 2. If it does, that enhances the chances of a rate hike. Then on Friday, which is June 3rd? Yes. Yep. June 3rd, we get the granddaddy of all, you know, numbers. Every month is the jobs report. Yes. And both. That's right. We're getting both in the same week. week. And these are the last two readings of those really big, important numbers uh, before the Fed meets on June 15th. Now, the first thing that's going to happen, if if the numbers are strong, the market's going to anticipate the The Fed increase. And so we're going to we should see then an immediate increase in interest rates. Yes. 
Right. Because the market's always anticipating what's going to happen. Yes. Um, and, and the first thing that will happen if the Fed does increase interest rates at June 15th is everybody's rate on their home equity line of credit is going to go up. Yeah. Because when the Fed raises short-term overnight rates that they charge banks, the banks all change what's called the prime rate. And the prime rate is what everybody's home equity line of credit is tied to. So that's already gone up once. Uh, and it'll be delayed because if it goes up in June, that probably won't hit people's statements until August Okay. because there's a look-back period. But that's the first thing that's going to happen. It'll also likely push up 30-year fixed rates. Now, David, you're a master's degree holder in okay. business. Yes. What's the one thing that could prevent the Fed from pulling the trigger on June 15th? Uh, nervousness somewhere in the world economy. Poor news. Um, there's the um, the Brexit Brexit. The uh, British exit out of the euro is a upper referendum thing hanging out there on June 23rd. Okay. All right. So my prediction, I'm going to make a bold prediction. I'm going to say the Federal Reserve is going to make the rate increase anyway. Why? They could always then pull it back uh, if the market went to heck in a handbasket if the Britons vote to leave, leave. the eurozone. That's that's the threat. So I don't think that's it doesn't. Happen. And on Friday too, Janet Yellen was at Harvard University banging the, uh, all of her drums, saying, "Well, you know, probably in the next coming months, you know, which isn't necessarily June, but coming months, meaning they meet again in July and they meet again in September. Uh, I think they have the month off in August. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, if they don't do it in June, then it's like, well, then for sure they're going to do it in July. Well, and so what could happen, like you said, is the the market reacts, you know, thinking that, oh, they're going to do it, and mm -hmm. interest rates start to creep up, which yeah. is the routine we've oh, done yeah. several times now. Rates creep up a little bit, and then if on June 15th they decide Don't, not to we do it. We could anything. have a little relief rally. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So anyway, the chances keep increasing that the Fed will raise rates, and we'll see. We'll get those two big readings this week. All right, when we come back, David's going to tell us, so where are rates right now? How good still are they, or have they already crept up? We'll answer that when we come back. If you have a question, you can join us at 414-799-1620 or throughout the Midwest on the AccuNet Mortgage toll-free line. That number is 1-800-877-1620. Expert advice on buying a home. Here's more of the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. Well, be sure to watch your speed this Memorial Day weekend. There'll be extra forces out on the roads from the State Patrol, ensuring we all get to our destination safely. This is Steve Kettelar. I'll be in for Gene Miller tomorrow morning on Wisconsin's Morning News, and we'll have a weekend recap from the State Patrol tomorrow morning on Wisconsin's Morning News at 8.07. Right now, though, we're in the midst of the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ with Brian Wickert and David Wickert. So I uh, wanted to do uh, variations on uh, all the other right stuff, which is the uh, standard language in, in all the uh, marketing we do, uh, and quickly do a rate roundup talking about ARMS, adjustable rate mortgages. So I wanted to just do a quick comparison. So on a $200,000 loan with 25% equity and all the other right stuff, but on a seven-year ARM, uh, Acunet could deliver 3.375% with an APR of 3.521. That's with our regular closing cost of $1,100. That's the appraisal, title, credit report, and the cost of the closing agent. Um, and for comparison's sake, so that's the seven-year arm. If you wanted to go to the five-year arm, it's an eighth lower in rate, 3.25% on a five-year arm with an APR of 3.51. And what I just wanted to point out, some people think that mm, I'm only going to be in this house for, you know, X amount of years. It's not my forever home. Well, just for comparison's sake, today, with all the same criteria, Acuna could deliver 3.625% on a 30-year fixed APR is 3.64. And for anyone who's wondering, the difference in the payments mm -hmm. between those interest rates, uh, the 30 to the 7-year arm, uh, is only uh, forty-two dollars. Okay, uh, and the difference between that and the five-year arm is only twenty-eight dollars. Okay, so not a lot of pickup. No, and and so you know what you're trying to balance is maybe a more attractive rate on an arm, but mm -hmm. really not worth the risk if your world looks different in six or eight years after that starts to adjust. Hence the 
adjustable, adjustable rate portion right. of the So that's why we're mortgage. not writing very many adjustable rate no. mortgages. I think where we find that more common is on the really big loan amounts. You know, you're borrowing $600,000. Now it makes more of a difference. Plus, we can probably deliver a lower rate. I know. It's just that interesting, you know, emotion versus logic debate because it's to say, you know, you don't know what the world will look like when that loan starts to adjust. Yeah. So you can never have to worry about it again by going with the fixed rate, but, you know, we've got all the options on the table, so if sure. someone wants an adjustable rate mortgage... We've we got can, them. We can probably yeah. deliver that five-year arm if you had a little bigger loan amount. I'm betting we can still do one with a two-handle, don't you think? Really? Five okay. Five, five, five. I'd have to go look into Maybe that. we'd have to charge a half a point or something. Hey, one other reminder on the rate uh, side of things. A half percent, I just did this calculation, if rates go from our current 3.625 on a 30-year fixed rate, and they climb up to 4.125%. That is the equivalent to a 6% rise in the price of the house. Okay, so there's your argument for buy now. So that's that's a two hundred thousand dollar house going to no two fifty goes to two sixty five. Okay, or two hundred thousand goes to two twelve. Okay, I'm sorry to cut you in price. price. No, in no, price. no, in price. Yeah. So you know home prices are going up. Why? Because there's more demand than supply. So you do have home prices going up year over year. And this just in, that could be the double whammy yeah. of, hey, uh, tight inventory in, you know, and you know, or mm-hmm. wherever, and rates aren't as as attractive. Well. Yeah. Right. If they only have to go up, a, uh, you know, half percent, now all of a sudden you're looking at a 10, 12% increase in your cost of home ownership. Yeah. So uh, better to buy now if you can find the home you like. You know, that's the that's the hard part right now. But we're helping people do that with the Rock Solid pre-approval program, Dave. There was an interesting article in the uh, Wall Street Journal from the National Realtors Association just talking about how nationwide inventory is at 4.7 months, mm-hmm. uh, you know, across all 50 states, but it is not a relevant piece of information because it depends, you know, the Heartland market's different than the Mequon market, well, than the Wauwatosa market. We talked about this a couple, was it last week or the week before, by price category, it also varies widely. I think yes. all of our uh, price segment markets here in southeastern Wisconsin were under six months, yes. a lot of them in the four to five range, like the national average. If you were under, what was it, 400000 yeah. in price, I've got a friend of mine that was trying to sell a $700,000 house. That is slow. Fewer going. people can write a check for. That's right. Yeah, that's right. They can afford that, so that's a whole different kettle of fish. Uh, when we come back from this next break, Steve, we have got some amazing, in a not so good way. Well, no, I have a good one. I'm going to start out with a really heartwarming, good story okay. from the front lines of mortgage lending, and then we have an incredible one that actually happened. You can't make some of this stuff up. When we come back, right here on the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. Getting you through the home buying process. Welcome back to the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. Colleen Boland will join us from the WTMJ 24-hour newsroom coming up here at the top of the hour. Right now, though, from the front lines of real estate, some real-life scenarios and situations to learn from. This last Friday was the last Friday of May, and that's usually when people want to buy their houses for traditional reasons, I guess, moving, getting out of their leases, whatever. And so it's busy, busy day in uh, mortgage lending land. And uh, tip of the hat to uh, Jason Hansen, who runs our operations, and his whole crew, because there are just more details and more pressure when it comes to uh, purchase transactions and little things that go bump. Anyway, one of the really nice stories, regular listeners will remember a story that we told earlier in the year about a couple where the husband had some very severe health problems, was on medical leave for the better part of a year. The wife had to go on family leave as well in order to take care of the three kids and her sick husband. Finally got back to work uh, here in the fall and in the beginning part of the year. They really, really wanted to sell their home in Milwaukee and move to the Elmbrook School District. That was kind of on the docket before, and then they had this very significant life interruption. Uh, And so they also then realized they needed to be able to buy that new home before selling the old one because now there's some medical equipment that's in the household, plus with three little kids, Easier to move out and then sell it. Well, exactly, because you know, showing a home like that is just not going to show well. Yep. So they pick up the phone, and they, on the advice of their real estate agent, who's one of the top agents at Shore West that we love to work with, and, and we were able to put together uh, a package, I'll call it, the magic ingredients 
where they had good income, so they could afford both house payments at the same time. Okay. That was a good thing. We did a 5% down loan to minimize the down payment because they had depleted their savings, as you might under expect yep. through this whole medical uh, journey. Um, and so that's 5% down with no monthly PMI to get the payment as low as possible. And we picked up all the closing costs on it. Then they got a seller closing cost credit for the rest to make the deposit into nice. the property tax escrow account. And uh, then they got a gift from uh, her parents for the down payment. So they didn't have to have any money. No. That's, you know, if you have relatives that can give you a gift, we could do a whole segment on that. Um, so it did take some tedious documentation. Sure. But that loan closed on Thursday. And that was just a great, uh, awesome. warm feeling. That was awesome. Good, good for them. Also on Friday, though, on the other end of the spectrum, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, Dave, do you want to tell that one? Yeah. I, so this wasn't even my loan, but sometimes you get to hear interesting stories sitting in the bullpen over there uh, on the loan consultant side of things. So there was a closing going on where uh, essentially I'll frame it like this. Brian, I'd like to sell you my house yeah. on Friday. Yep. But, uh, you know, I need until 9 a.m. on Saturday to move out. Uh, what? And what did you actually, tell me that? Uh, Friday. Uh, actually, At the closing table? Yeah. You know how I said I need until 9 a.m. tomorrow? I, I need until 3 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, actually, you know what? We'd like to stay in the house over Memorial Day. I know I just sold you the house, but we want to stay in the house over Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. You can move in all your stuff. We'll just throw a mattress down and sleep in the house with all your stuff because we're, I don't know, nostalgic. So there was a, there was a standoff. gunslinger standoff where uh, Sarah Wieseman, uh, president of our sister title company, Lakefront Title, was sitting on one side of the table, and on the other side of the table was the listing agent holding the deed mm -hmm. to give to Sarah to complete the transaction and wouldn't hand her the deed mm -hmm. until they kind of hammered out the oh, who's yeah. sleeping at the house tonight so the, question. That, that should not have happened at closing Correct. is the moral of the story. Is you, you can't sell somebody your house and then tell them at the closing I'd like table, to live there, please. <laughs> now, you can do that if you work it out ahead of time. That yes. happens all the time. Addendum O. Addendum O. That's the rent back yes. provision or occupancy. I think it's O for occupancy. Correct. But you can't go bringing that up at the closing I know I just table. sold you my car, but I'd like to drive it around this weekend, you know, yeah. before I just for a give it to you for real. Ago. Along those same lines, uh, I have, this is this happened a while back, but we had some sellers. This is on my Acunet Realty Advisors uh, putting that hat on. I had uh, hooked up these elderly people with a really good real estate agent to help them sell their house that they lived in forever. And they had a lot of things in the house. And so the buyers always get to do a walkthrough. So they were doing that the night before closing. Yeah. They went through there, and there's, like, still a basement full of everything. And then we're talking a lot of stuff. Yeah. And then they also had, like, their lunch plate there. Uh, you know, they just ate lunch. Some shoes next to the door. Some reading glasses. Doesn't look like you've really moved out. It looked like the movie Taken. I never saw that, but were like, they were just, like, whisked up by aliens. So the listing agent, who was the person that I had connected with these people, got the call, and they said, you got to come over here and look at this. And so she, of course, called the sellers and said, what happened? And they said, well, we couldn't fit any more in our car, so we just left. <laughs> and they were moving out of state. <laughs> here you go. Here's all your stuff. You, you can't do that. You, you should not. So, and, that. you know, let the record show, as much as real estate and mortgages is about numbers, there is a human element to all of this. And so just be cognizant of sometimes the irrational or illogical things that can go on, leaving stuff behind, wanting to sleep in the house you just sold, that can pop up. It's right. more it's rare. But right, it is but is the human part of well, and sometimes our you, world. You know, it's hard to cover everything with consumers, either if you're a real estate agent and you're trying to explain things to them, you know, how the process works. I had one the other day where um, I forgot to tell these first-time homebuyers that they really needed to tell me the minute they got an accepted offer. They waited like 10 days. Oh, man. Or maybe, maybe it's closer to two weeks. So, like, yeah, we got an offer uh, to buy this condo two weeks ago. Oh, well, the clock is already ticking. So, we had to get an extension on the uh, closing date on that one. Anyway, 
Uh, rates are still great. The takeaways are race mortgage rates are fabulous. Did I mention 3.625 with an APR of 3.69 on a 30-year fixed rate? That's true. That is incredible, but the clock is ticking because of the upcoming Fed meeting. Great time to buy a house. Still a great time to refi. All you got to do is click on the blue button at acunet.com. That's all we got time for this week, Steve. Very good. You've been listening to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. Straight ahead here, we'll check in with Colleen Boland in the WTMJ 24-hour newsroom. The preceding was a paid program. Advice and opinions expressed during the Accident Mortgage and Realty Show are solely that of the hosts or guests of Accident Mortgage and Accident Realty Advisors and not WTMJ Radio or Scripps Media Incorporated. If you-